many of you do the following things? So maybe whether your loved one lives in Philadelphia, lives in an assisted living community, lives in your home or down the street, you're calling to make medication reminders, you're picking up their meds, you're grocery shopping for them, you're planning their meals, you're ordering their supplies. How many of you are doing those things? I wanted to learn how to help myself as a family caregiver while coaching other family caregivers. That was important to me. And so I became a certified caregiving consultant so that I could learn how to do that. The podcasting just kind of came because I've always liked to tell stories. I studied broadcast journalism at Penn State University. I never really used it. I fell into IT. And I love showcasing the stories of family caregivers because I believe that you all are the real experts in caregiving. It's so important that we identify with the role of being a family caregiver because until we do that, we cannot connect to the support and resources that are out there. Self-care is the antidote to burnout. And none of us want to burn out in this room. We want to be there for our care partners and be there for each other. Folks started calling us in to need more and more help over the years. It got to be a lot. And I was working at the time, I felt lost. I felt isolated. I felt like I was earning my master's in caregiving. Writing was really therapeutic for me to help me process. I wanted to give people a taste of that. I want to figure out strategies and solutions for family caregivers and try these on and share them. Her blog, Happy Healthy Caregiver, turned into a business and a community where people come to her to find coaching and comfort, especially when it comes to self-care and identity, two things most caregivers overlook. I was so worried that if I didn't take care of my body, I was potentially going to repeat the same caregiving cycle for my children, and I didn't want that to happen. The emotional side of things started coming a little bit later. I want to dive into some tips and strategies that may help you on your emotional and mental health journey. Remember, you can do hard things, but you don't need to do them all alone. 